G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. It's time for another power rankings. This has become a bit of a weekly routine and you think as we get further and further into the season that it would become a little bit easier, a little bit more clear. Uh, we have not reached that point at all because I think at least two out of the last three rounds there's been a heap of results that have kind of thrown things into whack. And the tricky part about doing a power rankings is trying to decide how much weight each result deserves. Um, how much am I overreacting? I'm not too sure. I've done my best to try and come up with a fair ranking of the 18 teams based on form and basically how much we rate them. Again, like we've had, you know, big upsets. Not only that, but we've also got some teams that are really performing well. Um, but you look at their fixture and they haven't quite proven themselves and I would just love some of these contenders to play each other so I have an easier time ranking. Equally, somewhere in the middle, you know, there's teams that I still think are better than others but sit two wins behind the other. Uh, so we'll go through all of that. So how these usually work is I work from the bottom all the way to the top and uh, I guess we'll start with the bottom three. Now, I had a red zone last week, if you remember, a, a group of teams that I thought were no chance for finals. That has actually gotten smaller this week. And I will tell you the three teams that are currently in my red zone. So that's North Melbourne, Hawthorne, and Richmond as the bottom three teams. Now, North Melbourne being ranked 18th, somewhat self-explanatory. They just played Hawthorne this week, the only winless team, and uh, Hawthorne won. So naturally, they are one spot ahead, but not ahead of Richmond, who had the bye. Uh, but, you know, with Richmond, I put them in the red zone, not because I'm overly critical of the way they're playing or anything like that. I think I've, I've been giving them credit this year for playing well despite injuries. I just think they're probably out of finals calculations because of the injury list that they do have, not because that they've been exceedingly poor or anything like that. Particularly guys like Lynch and Bolter, you know, structurally those guys are important. Um, from a one and five position, I am just about ready to put a line through Richmond. I do think there's a chance they get their players back, back end of the year, start win some games. That wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, but I think finals is probably a bit of a stretch. So that's my bottom three teams. I have West Coast moving out of this red zone. So I'll go through the next two teams, and these guys are in my yellow zone. They're the two teams that I think almost certainly won't make the finals, but probably don't deserve to be in the red zone. That's the Adelaide Crows and then the West Coast Eagles. West Coast jumped slightly ahead of Adelaide on partially the eye test. They've also won an extra game. Adelaide's most recent game was losing at home to Essendon. West Coast pulled out a, a big surprise win in the Derby, and not only did they win, they won convincingly, and they played really well. And that's kind of and one of the many teams that has thrown the power rankings into a little bit of chaos. But I think that West Coast and Adelaide, like I said, are in the position where I'm willing to bet almost certainly they won't play finals, but I'm unwilling to put them in the red zone to, to rule them out completely. With West Coast, it's unclear where they sit. The last fortnight has been um, unforeseen. We did not see that coming. And uh, it remains to be seen, like, how sustainable is this? There's been a big, clear uptick in form. And that will be answered in the fullness of time. And we might get a good read on that this week when they take on the Gold Coast Suns, who is the next team that I have in this. They're three and three. The three wins this year have been against 15th, 16th, and 17th. And this week they play 14th. So again, I don't know how much credit to give them for that. They're clearly ahead of West Coast still and would deservedly go into this game favorites, but it could be quite revealing. Then I've got two seemingly out of form sides in St Kilda and Fremantle next. And both of these sides have plummeted a little bit. So the Saints sit two and four. And if you watch my just, just the tips this week, I tipped West Coast. Yeah, it's a bit of a bias call, but I sometimes just want to tip my boys and I'm fully prepared to get that wrong. Uh, but hypothetically, if West Coast win and St. Kilda lose this week, St. Kilda will be in the bottom four, which is kind of stunning because I would have thought, I was very confident on them making finals this year, but it's been, they're bleeding, it has to be said, and they're dipping down these rankings and not least because of a big loss to the Western Bulldogs on Thursday night, I think it was. 10 goals um, with the Bulldogs missing some soldiers. They really need to stem that bleeding and they can. This is just a moment in time, but they dip down these rankings as do Fremantle. And again, I don't know, I don't want to blow this Derby loss out of proportion. There is potential fatigue there. I mean, they traveled two weeks on the road. On the other hand, you know, not to make this a Western Australian thing, but West Coast did that and then smashed Richmond. So it's been a season of two halves for Fremantle. Good first three weeks. The next two weeks I thought were solid. Um, and then the, the last week, it all came undone. So it remains to be seen, you know, where exactly they sit naturally. And that's true for all of these teams. But I have Essendon and the Bulldogs higher than all of these teams below. So Essendon sit four and two. And uh, I'm, I'm kind of stunned by that result. Uh, I thought, I honestly thought there was a chance they would start this year one and six or two and five. And they're four and two. 
I didn't expect them to beat St Kilda. I didn't expect them to beat the Bulldogs. They did beat the Crows in Adelaide at the start of the season. I would have thought Adelaide were a much better team than they are. But either way, Essendon have been accumulating the wins without looking outstanding, but they've still shown some development. They're going all right, and they deserve to be higher than the Bulldogs, who, again, I think on the eye test have been very good when they've been on and pretty poor when they've been off. So a really hard team to rate. Three losses this year. Lost to the Cats narrowly. That was a, a good test, so I'll give them a bit of a tick for that considering how good Geelong are. Big loss to the Demons and a big loss to Essendon as well, hence why they're lower, but then they bullied some much weaker teams, which does suggest quality as well. So again, we got a big test this week. Fremantle and the Western Bulldogs at Optus Stadium. This will be a big clash. I have tipped the Dogs and that is reflected in my power rankings. I think they're just a little bit ahead. Scoring power as well is a big factor there. So then we have the two grand finalists as the teams outside of the eight. Now, the controversial thing here is I've probably put Brisbane much higher than perhaps they deserve to be. It's really hard. I know on a lot of key metrics, Brisbane are still playing well, but they sit two and four. Now, I thought they'd sort of gotten back into gear with a big win over North. Admittedly, like obviously the, the opponent is relevant there, but then they followed it up by going to the MCG and beating Melbourne. So I thought, here we go. Brisbane have clicked. Um, then they lost somewhat convincingly, considering the, the conditions they lost uh, by a decent margin to Geelong. I think it was only 26 points, but it wasn't far off being double their score. So there is that to consider. Again, Geelong are a good team, but I still think Brisbane, I trust a little bit more. I'm a little bit more confident in them, hence them being higher than Essendon. So I, again, this is a bit of an arbitrary analysis because I'm not purely rating on form. I'm also trying to rank it by how I rate teams. And that's why Brisbane still retain a reasonable ranking. And I still think Brisbane would probably beat most of the teams below them. Collingwood, I've also got in a bit of a light green zone, okay? Okay, and that will become more clear when I to show you the top six teams which are in the green zone. So Collingwood is nudging this group because, again, it's coming back to the trust. We trust Collingwood. We know that they're a quality side, but they have faltered this year in a big way and I think really clicked into gear against the power, a team that I have ranked higher than them and uh, ended up winning the game by like 41 points or something like that. Their pressure's back. They sit three and three. It's been a fairly tough fixture. They lost their first three against the Giants, the Swans, the Saints, who I thought were good at the time, they narrowly beat the Hawks, they beat the Lions, and uh, then they beat Port Adelaide convincingly. So again, they still need to do a little bit more to nudge back into this top six, and I do foresee them moving up that ranking. But at the moment, on exposed form, it's hard to really back them in any higher than that. So in the green zone, I have my clear top tier of teams, and I find it pretty hard to split still. And the reason being is because a lot of them haven't played each other. Some have, for sure but very early in the season, and uh, Geelong hasn't played any of the other teams. But let me just show you the entire top six. This is in the green zone, hence why I have Collingwood in light green, because I think they're just nudging this group. At the bottom of it, we have Port Adelaide. I will clarify what I did was, um, normally I, I look at last week and I try and make adjustments there. This time with the top six, I just pulled it all apart and completely reframed it. So if it looks a little bit inconsistent with last week, that's probably why. But again, let me know what you think. So Port Adelaide is the bottom of this group. They have beaten who they should have beaten this year and looked decent at times. They've also failed two big tests against some quality opposition in Collingwood and Melbourne. Melbourne sit higher than them uh, on that basis. Melbourne went to Adelaide and beat them. Now the Demons again have also lost just two games uh, this year to Sydney who look like a quality opposition and the Brisbane Lions who played really well that day. The Giants sit 5-1. and one. They come down a little bit after their loss to Carlton who leapfrogged them no doubt but again their fixture, I think they've been coasting a little bit since round three, and it's still hard to get a read on them. They have a tough test against the Carlton, they get a bit ahead, and they lose. So, like I said, I, I still think it's hard to split a lot of these teams, and come finals, the, you know, the order might be mixed again. But Carlton also sit 5-1 and one with one blemish against the Adelaide Crows, where they were kind of stunned by a team that really needed to perform and got the job done. And then I still have Sydney second. They sit 5-1. and one. Again, their most recent wins have been... The Tigers, the Eagles, and the Suns, none of these teams necessarily world beaters. They did beat the Demons in round one, so that kind of retained that ranking they had. Actually, it's worth noting, I said that the last three fixtures against the Tigers, Eagles, and Suns, one of those was a loss. Uh, but again, a lot of these other teams have had a blemish of some description. So then I've gone with Geelong in top spot. Now, I've been reluctant to put Geelong too high because they haven't played really quality opposition. Their fixtures haven't been too tough. That being said, I still think, even though the numbers in the ladder ranking doesn't suggest it, I feel, still think going to the Gabba and beating them there 
I know that Carlton and Collingwood have also done that, but Geelong also haven't lost a game yet. So it's getting to the point now where I think need to give Geelong that credit. They probably are the team to beat in the competition right now. And I'm really looking forward to them taking on Carlton this week at the MCG. It's going to go either way. They're either going to fall down these rankings because they've lost their first big test against another contender who we really believe is a contender, or they could fully legitimize themselves as the team to beat with a win here at the MCG. So I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be another revealing round. It may be that in a week's time, I'm still saying the same thing. Wow, we still don't know because things aren't going as expected. But this is my crack at power rankings, guys. Let me know in the comments, as you always do, where do you think I got wrong and where you think I am right. But for now, I'll say goodbye. I'll thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.